Lisa asks, how do I approach an existing client who I can see needs controller and CFO services? It's a check-in, right? It, it's, a, it's a check-in coming into the end of 2019. Yep, just doing check-ins with all my clients before we get to the end of the year, making sure everything is squared away. So how's 2019 going? Simple. And then go through the script. Go through the script in detail, follow it every single step. So that's what you say. And then you also go through, do the script, transition it simply like that. End of the year check-in, end of the year check-in, just a process, just a process. <laughs> and they're not going to be, they're not going to care. They, in fact, they're going to be happy. What, what happens is most accountants should be doing this anyway. The problem is they don't know how to monetize the experience. So clients hate they ever reach out because there'll be some clients you get on the phone with and you end up not pitching them, right? Because there's not a good opportunity. Rudy asks, I seem to get pushback every time I ask for someone to set up a recurring payment plan with me. How can I solve this problem? So what I do, uh, Rudy, is people sign agreements, DocuSign agreements with the ACH information in there. So the engagement letter has the ACH information in there and then you just put it in the ACH immediately. So it goes in the same day. Now it might not process for a day or two the way ACH works, but for them it'll process the very next day. So if you, you should put the, you should have a, a, an agreement signed before the call is over. And that agreement should include the ACH details and that should bill immediately. So that's what I would say to do in that case. Ashley asks, how do I stay motivated and driven during the slow times in my business? You've got to look at the bigger picture of your life. Like there's two things, right? One, I would look at the bigger picture. And then the second thing I would do is freaking fight like hell, fight like hell. Like what can we do to get this fixed today? Like who can we call back today? And I'm gonna tell you a story. I had a guy, this was in July 2016, and I spoke to him not but two hours ago. And he signed up to work with me, right? And he basically said at that time, you know, like it was back when I had, you know, a lot less confident and whatnot. He, he basically, at the end of the period of us working together, asked for his money back. And at that time, I had promised that to him. And so I had also helped this guy a lot, tremendously helped him, right? And so it was in this month of July where I had a bad month and he asked for his money back and I was already having a really bad month. And so not only were sales not going up, I mean, then I would have, I had a return, right? And so that was a breaking point for me. And I just had this thing snap in my head and I said, I'm not gonna let this guy or anybody else take my business from me. This is crazy. I said, this is totally unacceptable. I've been having trouble closing. Now I've got this guy doing this thing. And I, I remember I even took my hand. I'm not a physically aggressive guy. I mean, those of you guys meet me in person, I'm not like a, all right, I'm not like a, a big gym rat even, right? So, but I remember I just, I slammed the table, right? With my hand when I was got off the phone, right? And I remember at the time Amanda saw that because she was in the other room, whatever she heard it. And I never do that unless I'm like messing around with somebody or whatever, but I was actually upset. And um, I took that anger as fuel. And the next two days, I think I got five new clients in two days. Called everybody back I possibly could, went insane. And every person I called back, I said, look, hey, I thought of you today and you know, when I look back over the last six months of all the people I've spoken to, I feel like honestly, I could help you more than almost everybody else I've talked to. And so I wanted to call you today and see if you wouldn't reconsider working with me. Signed up five people in two days. That guy that asked for that return, six months later, he called me, apologized offered to pay for that thing again and came back in. Now, two years later, I talked to him three hours ago. He's one of the top clients in the history of this business in terms of his results and in terms of, you know, also his investment with us. Right? So the point in that story is that you want to take adversity as fuel. Okay. So, when something bad happens, you need to figure out a way to turn it into the best story you have. I, I first learned how to do this. There was a guy, Dave Ramsey, many of you guys heard of him, right? So 
he was bankrupt when he was 26. Now he has a company that does like 150 million a year in sales built on that story. Built on the fact that he went bankrupt at age 26. He helps people get out of debt. And so, you know, that's that's the way to turn your greatest weakness in life into a strength. Most people just let these things cripple them, be it a bad month in sales or bankruptcy or whatever. And how do you take your greatest weakness and turn it into your greatest strength and the the, the core of what it is that you do? Now, obviously you had a bad sales month, right? So does that need to like, oh my gosh, now I need to like make this the story of my entire life? No, because it's not that big of a problem. But you need to get crazy and you need to figure out a way to get crazy. You need to get out of, figure out a way to get on the phone. And, and you know, if you've got access to this deck and you are not using it and that's your biggest problem is selling, got to do it. You've had it for a while now. Got to do it and you got to do it today. Ashley also asks, how can I explain to prospects what a tax plan is? I tend to walk them through what it is and the result, but they don't really seem to understand it. It's nothing other than money. The reason why the tax plan is so easy to sell, well, I mean, most people, it's not easy to sell it. If you actually just do it. I talked to a guy today, right? And he's like, yeah, I only uh, asked for a tax plan one time and I asked for 4,500 and the guy took it and I've never done it since. <laughs> it's not easy to sell psychologically, but it is very easy to sell once you actually do it. You, every, all, people are all sorts of afraid, right? Brian asks, can you please thoroughly define value? I define it as ROI, but I'm interested to know what you define it as. When I think about the value, right? So there's the value of money, right? So that's great if we can help them make or save money. Right? There's the time. Can we help them save time? Or if there's just some emotional anxiety that we can do. Like those are really some really key ways that I always think about defining value. Because you can't always get to money, you can't always get to time. And, and you know, it's good to do the emotional side too. And and by the way, with the make and the save, it's also related to their behavior, right? So we, I had a question recently where, you know, the client is making nine hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year, but they're losing money every year because of their personal finances are out of control. So that's more about a behavioral change to help them make more money. So, and there's all sorts of things that are accountability and so on. So if you can make somebody a lot of money, if you can save them a lot of money, if you can save them a lot of time, if you can reduce emotional anxiety of something that they're doing, all of those things can be used. And actually I've got a training talks about, it's a process called value extraction. We actually put together a spreadsheet where I go through and show you how to map out time, money, emotion, and how to quantify those to create an idea of how much value you're providing to the client. 